Today we're going to make snowflakes. Uh, I live in the Shenandoah Valley of Virginia, and it happens to be snowy today, so I thought it'd be a good day to make snowflakes. So this will be a loose parts activity, uh, just like all of our activities are with Cuba planks. Uh, but you can use uh, any item that you have a lot of. Pennies, washers, paper clips, popsicle sticks, toothpicks, pebbles, whatever you can find. This lesson I'll be using Cuba planks, so you'll see what it looks like with those. Uh, besides uh, loose part learning, this is also play-based learning. It's project-based learning. It's creative-based learning. All of these rolled into one activity. So it uses both sides of the brain, and it helps people that are doing it remember a lesson and internalize it. They kind of make it their own because they've been putting some of their own creativity into it. Well, let's get started. The prompt is make a snowflake. That's, that's really all you have to say. No two snowflakes are alike. Every snowflake is going to be different. That is made during this uh, this challenge. You can make it on a table. Round tables work really well for this. You can work by yourself or work with another person or a group of people, whatever you choose. And I would give a modest time frame to complete, maybe five to 10 minutes and, and let, them, let them go with that. An alternative uh, prompt uh, could be to be building a giant snowflake. Uh, maybe there would just be one snowflake for the entire room and you would need lots of floor space for that. And that requires a lot of teamwork because you're trying to make it symmetrical, be a lot of communication among the, the builders to, to know what somebody's doing on one side and make sure that all the, the different legs of the snowflake look the same. So after that time frame, you can uh, observe the, the snowflakes that have been made, uh, walk around, make sure everyone walks around to enjoy and observe what others have done. You may want to uh, have some pictures of snowflakes or go online and look at the snowflakes, you'll notice, and they may notice for the first time, that every snowflake is based on a hexagon. It has six sides or six legs to it. That's just the way it forms together with the water molecules uh, coming together and bonding. A lot of people don't know that. I didn't know that for quite some time. So, um, so it's interesting if you let them first build a snowflake based on whatever they think their concept of a snowflake is, and you probably get a lot of snowflakes that, uh, that are not hexagonal, and that's perfectly fine. And then once they discover that, wait a minute, there is something very specific about snowflakes, then you could repeat this prompt, and this time you would have the added uh, parameter of it that it needs to be hexagonally um, symmetrical. Snowflakes are very photogenic, taking photos from directly above that, and then you can create a montage of whatever has been created. It's They're really interesting because everyone is so different. You can do any number of snowflake-related re topics. You can be talking about precipitation, rain versus snow, how raindrops form in the first place with a little speck of dirt or dust or pollen in the, in the atmosphere, and then the water pollicles glom onto that. And then if it's a below freezing, then that turns into a snowflake. You can also explore with books that you may have, especially in the younger grades, maybe you're reading a story and maybe that's what prompts you into making snowflakes. There's a lot of books out there uh, about snow. I'll just give you a few ideas. Uh, Snowflake Bentley, Snow, The Snowstorm Shows Off, Blizzards, The Snows of Kilimanjaro, Alone in the Arctic, The Snow Queen, Disaster Zone, Blizzards, and lots of Christmas books talk about snow, just playing in the snow, that sort of thing. But they can all be a jump off point to, to, to building your own uh, snowflakes. One of the nice things about this exercise with snowflakes is that you can do it and it's not messy. It's not wet. It doesn't, it's not time consuming, which some of the snowflake experiments are. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. It's great to get messy and, and really get the hands on and see a real snowflake if you can do some of those things. But if you don't have time, for that sort of thing, this is a way that you can start to explore snowflakes and, and get to know them better in a, in a concise uh, amount of time and, uh, and combining the creativity with that as well. I hope this is helpful. It's uh, one of my favorite activities because you can be doing it from the science side. You could be just doing this for the creative uh, aspect of it. Or maybe if you want to be creating relationships within your classroom so people are working together, and especially that giant, uh, the giant room sized uh, snowflake, that takes a lot of talking and communication if they're really going to get it symmetrical. Hope you have a lot of fun with this, and we'll see you next time.